All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Greg Arts from Punch Alert. Thanks for taking some time on your Tuesday afternoon to join me. We are going to be spending uh, probably about a half hour going through um, Punch Alert. We'll introduce, for those of you on the call, we see a lot of you trickling in right now. So I'll do a quick intro. I'll see everyone coming on the call. Um, for those of you that are not that familiar with Punch Alert, I'm going to provide a pretty quick run through of what we do, high level. Um, and then uh, and then I'm going to start showing you some new things with the new Punch Alert and 911 Plus. We get a lot of a lot of questions about 911 Plus. That's the big new feature coming out with our platform in a month or two. We still don't have an exact launch date yet, but we're getting very close, and uh, and so it's getting very exciting. So at the end of the call, I will start um, uh, demoing a few things, but I want to make sure there's time for questions, and we're not going to need the full hour. At least that's not my intention at all. So. Um, this is being recorded. If you uh, are not able to catch this live or you know other people that want, would want to see this, then just contact us. Um, or if you're already signed up, you're, you'll automatically get an email with the recording. Uh, so that's fine. And, and please chime in with questions. I'd love to make it interactive. If you have questions that I can answer throughout uh, that makes sense, uh, I'll do that. Um, but just throw them in at any time. And, and at the very least, I'll answer them all at the end. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we're very excited to you know, almost launched this new product. We've been working on it for uh, a good year now, over a year. Obviously, Punch Alert's been around since October 2014. And we've just learned so much from working with, with our customers. And some of our customers, I think, are on the call today. And so we thank you very much for, for teaching us and being our partners um, to learn really more about this problem we're trying to solve and how we can better solve it. So uh, without further ado, and again, if anyone has any uh, questions or trouble hearing me or trouble seeing anything, just chime in below with the question box. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, so quick agenda. So again, let's start off with what is Punch Alert? How does it work? And what problem are we trying to solve? Second step is what's new, the new design. We'll talk about chat, how we're visualizing a little bit more, the new responder controls that you'll have as a responder uh, for your organization. And some new functionality, the Explore and Activity tabs. These are all new. You'll see in the design and what's the purpose of those. And then definitely want to focus on 911 Plus as much as possible. We think it's a game changer. We'll talk about why. Uh, there'll be a quick demo. I'm not going to show you everything in the new product because it's not really ready for launch yet. But we are testing it actively and working on it. And it is getting very, very close. And we'll make sure there's time for questions as well. All right. So punch alert. Uh, it's a community of safety is, is something we like to say. It's something we're trying to build a broader community of safety, but it's something that you can think of for your organization, whether you have a school, a business, a, um, a public venue, uh, an exercise facility, really whatever your, your business or your organization is, you probably have your own internal community of employees, but possibly a broader public community around you of your own members or customers or parents or students, et cetera. And so we really think about community. That's super important to us. Now, before I dive into that, what does this mean functionally? Well, Punch Alert is a safety communications platform. So what that means, it is a mass notification system. Now, there are lots of mass notification systems out there that will send out text messages, emails, automated phone calls. And yes, we do all those things. Uh, and we're very mobile focused. That is a, certainly a differentiator. Lots of products have mobile apps. What we're really, you know, first of all, we built this from mobile, from the ground up from mobile, because we found out that that's really the experience where you can get the maximum benefit, both as a user and as a responder during an emergency. Um, and when we launched, emergencies really was that core, that only thing we did. It was just a, you know, the first version of our product was a red button on a screen, and, and we had an emergency app. And uh, we've really evolved that. But we also have a tips module and an announcements module. And so, and what really, what, what ties them all together, though, in our, in our world is we want you to basically rely on one system for event-based communication. So if there's an incident, be it an emergency or you have to send an announcement about something or someone posted a tip, from beginning to end, you shouldn't have to jump around from one system to another. And especially that's so important during an emergency when seconds, uh, when seconds are so valuable. Right, so in an emergency, someone's reporting an emergency, the right responder team that you set up will communicate about it, and I'll talk more about that in the new app. And then if necessary, you escalate, right? You, you mass notify large groups of uh, employees or, or the general public, or maybe you need to escalate it to the police. All that is possible 
right within that same interface. So panic button, responder chat, mass notifications, no need to jump around to different systems. Once it's resolved, you have a full record from beginning to end of exactly what happened. And that record is critically important. We keep hearing more and more about that from, from our customers, how valuable just that record is alone. And, and so you'll see how much control you have over who needs to get what. So it's, your employees are not going to get every single incident that occurs. You're going to control and customize exactly who needs to get every emergency, every tip, every announcement, whether it's an admin or responder, whether it's an employee group or list, whether it's your community, and so on. So in one slide, this is what we do at Punch Alert. If anything there is unclear, of course, just chime in with questions. All right, next slide. So this is the general problem we, we wanted to solve when we first launched the company. Now, 10,000 lives, that, it's a big number. That is an FCC estimate on what, how many lives would be saved in the United States per year by a one minute reduction in 911 phone call response time and due primarily to lack of location awareness associated with those calls, which by the way, over the last decade, over the last two decades, only gets wor has only gotten worse. And, and why is that? Well, it's because people are dialing 911 from their cell phones. They're not di dialing them from landlines as much anymore because we all have cell phones. We all have smartphones. We rely on that. We assume that's gonna be better, but in fact, it's actually worse because the 911 system is really designed for landline phones, for static locations. So when you call from a cell phone, usually the location they receive is the nearest cell tower. Now, there are different types of studies in different parts of the country, but about 60% of the time, they're not going to get your accurate location. That's really not acceptable, especially for those use cases where you don't know your location, you can't tell them, or you can't speak at all. So we really wanted to solve this problem, but the response time problem goes beyond 911. We really needed to enable smaller communities, the people around you, the organizations that you're a part of to communicate better during an emergency, during an incident, because that's where you can really get the biggest bang for your buck. You've got people already there that can help. So why not let them help? Because the average response time, call it 10 minutes, which, which was the average in 2014. We want to get that down to nine, but from minute zero to minute nine, we really want to help you do other things and communicate with other people and get help if you can in a faster way. All right, so you know, Punch Alert is an app. Now, why is everything moving towards an app, and why why do we call it Punch Alert and not you know your organization's app? Well, first of all, uh, Apple's actually not even really supporting that going forward. So the whole white label app thing is potentially going away. But really, the reason for that is that at the user level, thinking about your employees, thinking about your public, your members, etc., they don't want so many apps anymore. So. When we built this, we realized that getting people to download an app is harder and harder. Even if you get all these great safety benefits, people say, well, I'm not gonna spend a couple minutes to do it. I'm not gonna save, put the space on my phone and I'm not gonna put something on there that can allow people, allow my company to track me, which of course we don't do and you don't do, but not everyone necessarily uh, realizes that. So, so at the end of the day, you have to show what's in it for the end user. And that's really what we wanted to do. We want this to be positive, not using scare tactics, about you need this or else, but what can you do positively to contribute to your own community, to your own organization, to the people around you, et cetera. And, and, and then the 911 thing, the, you know, the, the red button is there for you when you need it, but community is so critical. And we've seen that with so many other apps like, like Waze, if you, if you like to use that app, or, or so many other community-based uh, apps, it's, it's so important. And so when you build your, your own community of safety inside Punch Alert, I'll just take you a few uh, through a few high-level high things. One of the first things you'll do, and you'll go through a very organized process um, that's, uh, that's run by Carol Tobias, one of our other co-founders and, and our COO. She'll really walk you through it in, in detail, uh, is customizing your organization. And one of the things is geofencing. So you'll want to define, this is my protected area, or these are my protected areas. They don't have to be right next to each other. They can be spread out over an entire town, entire country, whatever. Uh, but those are your protected areas, and there are many purposes for geofencing. I won't get through all of them today, but if you'd like me to talk about it, just jump into a question. But geofencing is very important for defining your protected areas, protecting your people's privacy, routing emergencies appropriately, uh, and more. Okay, and designating a responder team. This is not something every organization already has. So if you think about your you know, your, your business or your location, whatever it is, uh, do you have a safety team 
you know, do you, you may have one kind of informally. These are just administrators, usually, that are going to receive every single emergency alert because you don't really want every alert going to the police. The responder team is the filter. They're the ones that receive everything, that manage it. They're, they've got a lot of functionality in the mobile app that other people don't have. We're actually launching more functionality for them in the new mobile app. Now, it's really important that the, the app itself be super simple for everybody else, but responders do have extra functionality because they have to practice. They've got more to do in an emergency. And so uh, designating that team for each one of your locations is one of those early steps. We provide training for the administrators and for the responders. And last, one last configuration I'll, I'll, I'll focus on and move on is, is emergency plans. So if you think about all the types of incidents that may happen or have happened on your on your property, uh, you're going to want to have plans associated with those, especially for emergencies. We're starting to hear it for tips too. But for emergencies, if there is a fire, you probably have a plan. It may be really simple. For an active shooter, you probably have a plan. You know, it may be run, hide, fight, and that's all it needs to be. But you need to have some sort of plan. And what we do is allow you to distribute your plan uh, in the app automatically once the emergency has been categorized. So these are not our plans, these are not our categories, and we don't provide that level of training. There's lots of great companies we can refer you to that provide the, all that uh, security training. Um, we provide you the technology you'll need to communicate really efficiently during an incident. And emergency plans is one of those things we think you'll get an immediate benefit from. All right, onboarding, pretty straightforward. I won't touch much on that. And then all the functionality, you'll see a lot of this in the demo. Um, location is something you'll see us talk about a lot because of that response time problem because of that first 10,000 lives location is generally the issue it's one of the biggest issues that in communication um, so those are the two things we, we think about um, in indoor location is becoming a much hotter topic and, and we do have a solution for that as well and devices so you can use this on your iOS Android we do have a Mac uh, and PC application the web console can be run from any computer with a browser, so very flexible there. And um, and then we do have, so again, we do send out text messages, automated phone calls, emails. So if you have people that say, oh, I don't have any device really, it's like, well, if they can receive a landline call or if they can get a text message or they can get an email, they'll still be able to get be involved with our system. Um, but of course, the best devices you'll want to use are iOS and Android. Okay, so what's new? Well, the first thing that's new is a design change. And, and this is the emergency design. And you can see uh, in this front screen behind this pop-up after an emergency has been reported, what the new interface is gonna look like. And you'll see these five tabs, really four tabs and the button uh, down at the bottom of the screen. And, and again, everything you'll see here today is based on how we've witnessed people use the product, but also how we think it's gonna be much easier for you to extend your community using our product. So people can find you, follow you, join your org, receive your announcements in one single feed. So we'll talk all about that. The map is still, you know, for those of you that know our product well, the map is still there. A lot of the functionality, you're, you're, uh, you know, most of the functionality you're, you're familiar with is all, all gonna be pretty similar, um, but there's just gonna be um, a design change around it. Um, when you report an emergency, you will notice, and we'll talk about 911 plus and emergency contacts, but this is what the design looks like for reporting. After it's reported, you'll see this stream interface. This stream interface, which is for those of you that haven't used our product, that's where you live during an emergency, right? And, and you're seeing all the mass updates go there, the emergency plans there, all the chat is there. And really in our first product, you know, we didn't realize how much people were going to chat. We noticed, wow, they're really, uh, a, 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 we designed it so much for submitting content, like submitting text and photos and audio and, uh, and video. And we wanted them to be able to do that. And what we really saw, and people did do that, but what I, we really saw happening were conversations. And so that's what we wanted to enable. A chat-like experience that's gonna be very familiar to anyone that's used, that's really, chatted at all on a smartphone, which most of us have. And, but still with that same functionality, it's gonna be much more visual. So less clicks, hopefully more information at the, in front of your eyes. Responders, you're gonna see a lot of information right there on the stream. 
that you may not have seen before. So, um, so we're really excited about this design. And at the end of the demo, I'll show you just a quick view of the, the Android app. So this is emergencies. This is tips. So for those of you that use tips, you'll see a new design here. One thing you'll want to uh, know is these images and these titles are all at your control. So you don't want some of these. That's completely fine. You're going to be able to set up the categories if you decide to use tips. Not every customer does. But if you uh, do want to use tips on your property, um, you can set the categories you want to use them for, the names, the images, and who receives these tips, we call them tip responders. They don't have to be the same people as your emergency responders. And so that is tips. All right, keep moving along. Announcements. I think you're going to really like the announcements module. A lot of you are already using this, and usually you send uh, the announcements from our web console, which of course you can continue to do. Um, and that's having that's going through a design overhaul as well uh, after this launch is done. It probably won't be launched until uh, beginning of, of 2018. Um, but this is the new. This is the way the activity feed. This is your global activity. Uh, which if you have all, you'll see all your activity in one feed, which is going to be really easy for everybody. And if you look at announcements, this is what they look like. And if you are an announcement administrator, here's where you can post or send your announcements. And you'll have, just like now, subject, uh, your the content, you can categorize it, you can enable comments if you want. That's fairly new. We do have responses right now. We decided to replace responses with comments because Again, that's how people really wanted to use it. Um, so you can enable comments, and then you decide exactly who needs to receive this message. So it could be your entire organization. It could be just a list you've set up. It could be a, a subset. You decide. It's always going to go out through the mobile app, and you can always choose. I want to send it also through email, through text message, through automated phone call. And then we've got some other special things. Uh, you could use like Twitter. Uh, we have a Twitter integration. We have a website widget. If you want to quickly post something on your website, it's one line of code, pretty easy to use. Uh, there's a Slack integration. And then some of our customers have some custom integrations done. So, um, so feel free to talk to us about that. And then the last, uh, and then just like now, we do still support the yes or no question and uh, the requested location, which are really, uh, simple and easy to use. And now you can do all that right from the mobile app pretty seamlessly, just like this. All right, that's announcements. And managing incidents. You'll see there is a new design for the responders to manage incidents. All, all the same functions as before, uh, just in, in, improved functionality in certain areas. Uh, for example, uh, in the send update, you can now send photos just like you can upload content, now if you want to send a mass update out to your organization, you can send a photo out to everybody. Uh, you can send an audio recording out to everyone. And you can choose. You can send it to just a subset. So you can notify uh, you know, an entire employee group of the, or, or multiple groups of the emergency, but maybe you only want to send an update out to one of those groups. You don't have to necessarily send it out to all. So you have a little more control over all that. Uh, in the new product. And you'll see this thread of images where uh, we're trying to make it just a little bit faster for you to know what you're looking at and putting people's photos um, in the stream when they're chatting, on the map, when they're checked in, just helps you locate people and know what you're, who you're communicating with just a little bit faster. Uh, that will mean you're going to want to you know, recommend that your folks uh, submit a photo. As part of the, um, as just part of the getting started process, that'll just really help you. And then you'll manage the incident from the web as well, just like you do now. New design again for probably early next year, beginning of next year. Right, I'm gonna stop for a second, just make sure there are no immediately pressing questions we should um, uh, Can everyone hear me okay? Someone says there's currently no sound. I just want to assume everyone can hear me. Just fine. Um, someone's saying there's currently no sound. If someone could submit, okay, thank you. You're all saying you can hear me clearly, perfectly. Okay, so that's only one person that's saying they can't hear me. So I'm not sure. That must be on, on your side. Okay, um, so let's move forward with 911 Plus. So a lot of you are here today for that. And 
So this is a really important feature. This is something we've been working on for a while, and uh, it goes back to that problem we discussed at the beginning uh, of the session, which is that uh, when you call 911 from a cell phone, they don't necessarily know where you are. About 60% of the time, they don't know where you are unless you could tell them. And even if you could tell them, it takes a lot of extra time for them to manually enter that in. Um, and so, so this is a really big problem. And the reason is it's using, when you make a call, you're using the cell towers, right? It's going through AT&T and Verizon, and then you're connecting to a 911 call center. These are called PSAPs, public safety answering points. And there are many of them. There's almost 7,000 of them uh, across the country, and they all use different technology, different software, which makes, without a standard, that's why it's so hard to, uh, for the cell networks, for them to get this right. And all the PSEPs have to have their own budgets and they implement things on their own time. Even though the FCC mandates things like 80% of calls must have an accurate location by 2021, that deadline, even first of all, that's not that impressive. One out of five still doesn't have it. And second of all, that they're not even going to meet, meet that deadline. So we needed to come up with a better solution. And, and that's what 911 Plus is. It is an internet-based call to 911. And it uses your GPS location by default. And so instead of dialing 911, which is opening up your phone app on your smartphone and dialing, we're going to recommend you open up Punch Alert and hit the red button. And based on where you are, we're going to know where to de default it. But if you've subscribed to 911 Plus, you're going to be able to call them. You could if you're on a campus and they're nearby responders on a, on a campus of a YMCA or a school or a business or public venue, et cetera. You, could, you can report to those people as well and your emergency contacts all at the same time. But that call to 911 Plus will deliver your name, your callback number, and your exact GPS-based location to the 911 call center. So while you're making the call, you could actually see the information you're sending to them. That alone is really the big game changer in our view. Um, and the fact that this works in 98.4% of the country. So every major city, really the only few, there's about 80 or so call centers throughout the country out of those 6,800 that don't uh, support, um, it may be a little bit more, those, na those numbers fluctuate, but again, it's, it's, it's about one, one and a half percent that don't support it. And those are literally rotary based systems that don't cover many 911 calls you know, in, in Alaska and so on. For the most part, this is gonna work everywhere and, uh, and it's gonna solve that problem of calling 911 and having them know where you are. So if you need to call silently, which they always recommend you call versus text, you know, and you know, you text if you can't call basically, right? But if you could call and deliver your accurate location as well, uh, that's really the holy grail in our view. So you can't talk, at least they know where you are, they know who you are, they know your callback number, and, and also your family knows that you've dialed 911 and where you are, uh, that's what's coming soon. This is a $1 per month upgrade for any user. And so this is something organizations can consider part of their contracts for their people or just some of their folks. This is something that any individual consumer can just buy for themselves or their families, their children. Um, it's just a better way to call 911. So we're really excited about it. Okay, that's it as far as the deck. I'm gonna move into some demos now. Again, if you have questions, please send them in. All right, great. So I'll just quickly go over the web console, and then I'll show you some of the the mobile, uh, the mobile app. I'll I'll demo the current production mobile app, and then I'll just show you a few things on the new app, which is on my. So I'll demo. I'll move from iOS to Android. But for, again, for those of you that don't know our product too well, you know, in the admin settings, this is really where all the, you know, the 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 work happens before you get started, right? Setting up all your users. Um, and every user has quite a bit of information about them. You can see they, they have statuses which you can use. Um, some people can just turn their statuses off or you can schedule people's statuses if they just don't want to get alerts at certain times of day. Uh, but for every user you're going to want to set, are they an admin? Are they an announcement admin? Meaning can they send announcements? And what's their role during an emergency? And these are all customizable by you. Now notice I'm within Punch Technologies. But you'll see your logo up here and your org name over there. And if you have an enterprise with lots of different locations that need to be managed separately, then you'll have that, your enterprise administration as well as all your separate organizations, again, if you're an admin. 
All right, so that's the users. Locations, really easy to create geofences for your org. So if you go in and create a new location, you can just pick an address. So I'll just do our current one where we are. Do a quick search and it brings you to where you are and you can switch to satellite mode. You can zoom in, you can do all that and then define your geofence. These geofences can be as big or small as you like, like that. I won't save it, but if I saved it, that would be there. And then once you have it set up, you can manage as many geofences for your organization as you like. You can time them. If you don't want to accept emergencies on weekends, that's at your control. And they're all um, right here. All right. So I won't go through all these settings today. There's quite a few, including how do you connect with your local police department? What are your predefined messages? What are your integrated systems? Um, what are your lists? Are you using beacons for indoor location, which I'll show you more about. One thing I, I do want to spend just a moment on is, is the archives. So in the archives, you always have every emergency in your system. And so you'll see a detailed record for every emergency from beginning to end. How long did it take? How many people checked in? All the logs, all the content. So that full, full record of everything is always here. And that's really important. Some people might say, well, I didn't get it. Well, your status was off if it's red. Um, and otherwise, you know, you can go in and see, well, okay, well, you got this push notification on email uh, by these channels. You got these phone calls, text messages, et cetera. It's the same for announcements and tips. There's a communications log for all of it. So we always know if something's not going through, you'll be able to see it in your own logs. All right, and again, having that record for emergencies is really, really critical for tips as well, but especially being able to, and we've automated some forms for some customers that have these very special forms that need to be filled out, one of which is an attendance form, uh, which, which I'll, I'll provide a demo for, um, but other folks have other kinds of forms they need filled out, and saving you time in any way associated with an incident is, is our goal, so if that's something you need, uh, just let us know. All right, I'm going to put my phone on the screen now. So I'm gonna start with my iPhone which is set up with the production app. So this is the app that many of you are familiar with. Okay. And you can see I'm inside a geofence. It's a little shaded area. And this black pin is telling me, well, where am I gonna report the emergency? Well, that's listed right there. The blue dot is my current location. So if I wanna report an emergency somewhere else, I can drop a pin or I can search. You'll see in the new app, we have favorites. So you can set ahead of time the locations that you may want to use most frequently to report an incident, it, you know, which may not always be your current location and you don't want to have to take the time to drop the pin or type it in. So again, we're trying to save you time there. Now, it says Punch Technologies in my logo because I'm in my geofence, so I'm gonna go ahead and report an emergency. I'm gonna skip the countdown. It is vibrating in my hand instead of as a fire. Okay, at this point I've reported the emergency. And this is my stream. And you can see it was reported at this time. It was categorized here. And there's a plan. And there's the plan. So that's how you can quickly get that in people's hands. And you can see the location on the map. Where am I relative to the emergency? I can switch to satellite mode. And if you really want to have an accurate location, because I am indoors right now, and sometimes GPS can have you just a little bit off, Notice I'm very close to punch demo one. I'm less than a meter away. There's actually another beacon in my office, but these are beacons. So in addition to seeing my, you know, what I look like, my role, check-in time, region, showing me on the map, if I have beacons, uh, you can see exactly, sorry, someone else is reporting something. This is our demo account. So excuse me. I go back to my emergency. And you'll see when I go back to my user check-ins. Okay, so this 0.5 meter away from that beacon. So what is that? So I'm gonna take a quick photo so you can see. That's it right there. And you can see, punch demo one. 
So I'm very close to that, and that's how it knows. So imagine that beacon was named Greg's office. That would be the appropriate name if it was placed in here. Uh, you'd know exactly where I am. And so at the bottom, again, which now is more like chat, you see before we had these buttons to promote just posting content. So, you know, smoke in lobby. Or uh, you want to place an audio recording. Or the photo, as you saw, or video. And then there's an attendance module as well, which you can quickly say, I'm missing some. I'm missing John Smith. Now that attendance uh, submission is going to create a form behind the scenes, which can be pretty valuable as well. So there's a in the web console you can see the form during the emergency, and then after the emergency is resolved, you can uh, see the uh, archived form for printing later. But that allows you to really just quickly and easily see who's missing people, who has extra people, who has everyone, and if you need to share it out, you can do that. And so this is where responders are doing all their work. And usually it's a subset of responders. It's not every responder. You know, every responder will get this content here in the stream, but only some will be charged with, okay, I'm gonna release this to all my employee groups. I'm gonna release this to official responders, et cetera. And now I'm gonna send a mass update. I'm gonna say, stay inside and wait for more information. You'll notice that can send out text messages as well as push notifications. So you can leverage all the channels if you're worried about the folks that don't have the app, that's okay. That's why you enable the text messaging and the emails. Can recategorize, maybe it was categorized wrong. I wanna change it. And now a new emergency plans go out. All right. And user submitted content. So by default, everything that comes in is only visible to responders. But let's say you look at this and you decide, you know what, everyone needs to see this because it's a suspicious person, it's a, maybe it's a child you're looking for, let's share it out. You'll see in the new app that when you do that function that I just showed you, you'll have the exact control over who you send it to. So we're trying to give users more control. Even when they look at the stream, you'll, you'll have more visibility into who's doing all this stuff rather than necessarily reading my name. Uh, it'll be much more clear that the audio, the photos, the video, all that is gonna be right in the interface. And so I'll, sh I'll show you a little bit of that. Um, this red button at the bottom, this is if I wanna to speak to responders. So if I wanna make a phone call, I can do that. I can always see who's checked in. You can see me again. Uh, there's, a, there's a filter in the new app as well. So if you wanna filter by role, I just wanna see my responders. I just wanna see my employees, et cetera. You can filter. And then when everything is resolved, say all clear, false alarm, and that's it. That emergency is now gone from my device. And the only way I can see that would be to go uh, to the web console. All right. So that is the quick, uh, again, questions. Please chime in and we'll address them all at the end. Um, but that is the quick overview of emergencies in the current product. And, and it's still gonna work very similarly in the new one, uh, except of course now we have 911 Plus as a critical component of that. Um, we've been asked many times, or, or been part of this discussion where folks have said, okay, there's an emergency happening on my property. What's the first thing I do? Do I call 911 or do I, um, or do I report an internal emergency? And some people say 911, other people say internal emergency, because you need to, you know, it'll take the police 10 minutes to get there. You gotta get on lockdown and evacuate as quickly as possible. But, but calling 911 is always a part of the plan. Someone has to do it. And in fact, sometimes too many people do it or sometimes nobody does it because they're looking left and right and assuming someone else has done it. Well, now you'll always know, uh, you'll always know if someone in your organization or someone on that property already dialed 911 using the app. So that's another one of the benefits of 911 Plus as part of your organization. It's just having awareness. Did someone call on my property? Uh, and then of course the location you're sending is so, is so critical as well. So, um, so I'm gonna show you the new app and then we'll take questions. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen you know, the current one, you can see posting tips is down on the left and announcements are in the top right. And announcement administrators can create announcements from down at the bottom here. And you'll see everything is now based on the tabs 
at the bottom. So uh, you won't see announcements at the top right anymore. You'll see them down in your activity feed and you can post announcements or tips down at the bottom right in the new interface. We'll still have this left nav um, for various functions and, uh, and I'll show you that as well. So you'll, have, you'll still have your left nav and you'll have the red button, uh, but you'll have these other tabs at the bottom. You'll still also have your red banner and so everyone's familiar with that. All right, so I'm gonna take this off the screen now. and put my Android on the screen. It's having trouble doing that, so. I'll just kill our server for a moment. All right, there we go. Start up again. Okay, should be seeing my Android device on the screen now. So this is your sneak preview. So yes, this is real. We're not just talking about it. It is actually coming. And so this is the Android version, not fully done yet. You me zoom in on my current location. You'll notice Punch Technologies is there by default, the blue dot. And one of the big differences though you'll see is you know, this bottom nav, of course, the red button, you can change your location after reporting. So you'll see this address here at the top. So now you don't, you can still change it before you report just like you did before, just by dropping a pin. So let's do that, let's drop a pin. So now I drop a pin, I see the address, I can post a tip or emergency right from there. Or I can go straight here and use one of my favorites. And so this is where it'll be very easy for you to create your home location, your work location, et cetera. And that'll be a quick way for you to just create a uh, tip or emergency right from there. And you can create favorites as easily as added putting a little star right at the top. Okay, and once you create an emergency, uh, it'll look like this. And so you'll see the stream, it's much more visual, this chat interface at the bottom, you'll see the photos and the text and the person's photo right there in the stream interface. So we think you're gonna really love it. It's very interactive, it's very natural you post a photo you don't leave the stream you're right there so if I want to post an audio recording I could just do it right in front of everything else and then after I do the audio I can type something submit it and it's that easy very fast same thing with the photo I'll take a quick photo my kids as of a couple of years ago and that's it Really simple. And then the responder interface, again, is up here. Um, some more functionality. We'll provide all the videos and training materials updated and all the support you need to make this transition. It shouldn't be too hard, but we're here uh, if, you need, if you need us. And for every, for every entry, you can always press on it and make sure. Who can see this? Well, just responders can see this. So that is the emergency interface. If I go back to home for a minute, um, so you'll see these tabs. So explore. Explore is for, it's a quick and easy way for you to follow other organizations around you. Or if you want to open this up to your public, it's this simple. You'll be able to explore what's around you and follow. Um, and then for, got it, I'm searching near Charlotte. And you can see I'm part of Punch Technologies. I can press it and I can still see all my emergency plans right here. If I'm a public member, I wouldn't see it. And there's some other information. But this is just a quick way for you to find things that you want to follow. And then the activity feed. Right now there's some active emergencies, so it's straight, taking me straight there as it should. But I'm gonna go to the all, and here you can see some announcements coming in, tips. So this is my unified feed. Of course, if I just want to see announcements, I go there. If I just want to see tips, I go there. And you can see how I can interact with them. And whenever I want to post a tip or announcement, I just hit that little button down at the bottom right. So we think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, I think you'll be pretty straightforward, um, but we're gonna be really actively looking for feedback and ideas uh, as it gets released. We're, you know, we're gonna really wanna tweak it, continue to tweak it as we always do. Every week, every couple weeks will be a new build where we fix certain things or we tweak certain things based on your feedback. And if I go to the left nav, I just wanna call your attention back to 911 Plus. I am a 911 Plus subscriber. If I wasn't, you could subscribe right there. And it's really pretty simple. 
again, you're going to want to manage your emergency contacts and add them up to five people. These are the five people that are going to get a text message when you call 911 Plus from our app. And it'll, it'll simply say, Greg Arts is calling 911 from this location. You're listed as an emergency contact sent from, from Punch Alert. All right. And so that'll keep other people in the loop. And how to call, it's really very simple. You press the emergency button. This is our little walkthrough. You make sure 911 Plus is checked, which in most cases, it's already going to be selected for you, unless you're not geofence. And then you hit report. So the countdown is basically going to be happening still. Um, we've extended the countdown a little bit to give people time uh, because we found most people are hitting skip countdown anyway. So uh, with 10 seconds, so we said, all right, let's give them 30 seconds because we're going to give them the control over the location they send. You want to make sure all the information you send is correct if you need to change it. So, you know, you can do that. Um, but you'll see that visual countdown. It'll still vibrate in your hand. And if you want to skip that countdown, you just hit report. And then that 911 plus call will look like this. So that call did actually go through our voice over IP infrastructure to our end provider to make a test 911 call. Obviously, in a real emergency, you'll be making a real call. But this is how you can just get familiar practicing it and making sure, OK, my name, my number, and you turn on your speaker and you can hear it. But it'll be very similar. It obviously won't say practice call on it. And that is it. It's designed to be pretty simple. We think you're going to love it. We'd love your feedback. And so at this point, I'm going to stop and take my Android off the screen here and answer any questions you have. So we'll take a look. OK, uh, just looking at a few. Yes um, to the question, is this recorded? Yes, it is recorded. Um, and so if you're on this call, then you're already registered, in which case you'll be automatically getting the recording, probably, probably by tomorrow. Uh, yes, there is an additional cost associated with 911 Plus. So our base product, still everything, the pricing is the same. The only thing new now is, is, is 911 Plus. So this is, a, this is a very expensive actual feature for us to support on a per user basis. Um, and we believe everyone in the world should, should have it, which is why we priced it at only $1. So uh, it's a very thin $1, but we really want everyone in the world to have that. So uh, you could still get Punch Alert without 911 Plus. It'll work great for all your users uh, at the same price point. But if you want some of your folks or all of your folks to have 911 Plus, then it is $1 per user per month, so 12 bucks a year. And you can pay that for, for them if you want, in which case then we can activate their account or give them a code so they don't have to buy it for themselves in the app. And that's a nice thing for you to do for them because it'll help them really when they're not on your property as well. Uh, they'll just have a better way to contact 911 anywhere. But if they're on your property, then you know if they're calling 911, you're getting alerted, they're reporting to your internal team while dialing 911 plus. So it's something I think you, most folks that we've spoken to, and we've spoken to a lot of customers about this, have said that they'll probably be buying it for at least a subset of their employees, maybe not everyone, but, uh, but certainly a subset. And, and hopefully those they don't buy it for will buy it for themselves. So uh, yeah, that's how, that's how the 911 Plus uh, payment side works. Uh, if that wasn't clear, please chime in. All right, a bunch of other questions. Let me sift through them here. Okay, and just as a reminder, okay, a few more questions I'll go through. And just as a reminder, anybody can download Punch Alert and subscribe to 911 Plus. So I see another question is, you know, is 911 Plus also its own separate app? And the answer is no, it's not. It's something we've talked about, but really, uh, it's very simple for anybody just to download Punch Alert for free and then buy 911 Plus for themselves, you know, through the Apple iTunes store. You know, basically, it's an in app subscription if you've done that before. And it'll, you know, bill you 99 cents a month uh, for, you know, until you cancel it, if, if you want to cancel it. And so that's something anybody can do. They just download Punch Alert for free, subscribe to 911 Plus, and, uh, and that'll work out really well. Um, 
Another question I think we answered already, can an organization buy it for their people? Yes, they can, either with a code or not. Okay, compatibility. So that's a good question. Will the new app be uh, compatible with the old app? And the answer is yes. Now we want, we want people to upload to the new app though. And if you're set your iPhone or your Android the way I do to automatically download and update with as new updates, then you'll just have the new app. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people uh, manually update all their apps. And so you'll want to encourage them to upload, update to the new app. It's going to be a lot easier for us. But for a period of time, and we haven't set that yet, but I think at least three months, we will be supporting the old app. And actually making it backwards compatible is one of those things that is taking us a little bit longer uh, to get right. So that's what all the testing is, is uh, all the extra time is going into testing, testing 911 plus and uh, making sure we can also be backwards compatible. Okay, um, next question, what's coming next with 911? So that's a good question. So 911 plus really, as you can see, is pretty simple right now. Um, the question is, what else can we add to that? Because it, it's a, because it's a, a data, an internet-based call to 911, there is actually quite a bit we can do going forward. One of the things, just so you know, that we're doing, we're not really exposing yet, is if you make a 911 call, we are going to record it. Um, it is perfectly protected and private. The, 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 the purpose is if you request us for your own 911 call, we can provide it back to you, and we'll probably be providing an interface where you can, uh, uh, where you can you know, do that all yourselves without asking us in the app at some point. And so recording the call is one of the great things we can do because it's an internet-based call. But there's going to be a lot more coming. You're going to be able to do dynamic location with 911 phone calls. That's really critical. I mean, we, in speaking with the police as we do, we work very closely with the police, and they're very excited about this as well. If you're in Charlotte like we are, CMPD is, is, is very excited about this. We're doing test calls with them next week. And, and one of the things they mentioned is, uh, okay, you get a much better location when you start the call, but what if they're in a car and that location keeps moving? Can you keep tracking them? And the answer is, well, yeah, that's what we do with organizations today. We, we, you know, we track them until the emergency is resolved um, and provide that address or provide that dynamic location to the internal responders. But we can't do that to the police yet because we're doing this through a, an infrastructure, again, that was really designed for static. We're just providing a more accurate real-time location for a person that's on a smartphone, potentially on the go. However, things are changing. We are on top of this. We are going to be able to provide dynamic location uh, at some point. So that's one thing. The next thing is, can we provide photos, video, uh, you know, FaceTime, imagine FaceTime. How can we, you know, you know, think about all the things you're doing in these other social media apps. Why can't we do that with the police? Well, that is coming and that, that's really what this is all about. We need to work towards that. The government put things in place like next gen 911 and said okay hey everybody has to be compliant with that but it's not it, from a top down approach it's not going to happen uh, at least in the next next 5 to 10 years and that's why we needed to create an approach we think the internet based approach is the right approach and uh and so we'll always be frankly ahead of what you know what you're just going to get by dialing 911 on a cell phone and so hopefully everything will improve on all sides and we'll be able to add that functionality first to you uh, in our app, in Punch Alert. So, uh, so it's, re it's really exciting. We're, we're excited about what we can do, but we needed to start simple and solve that location problem. And that's a very critical step one. All right, I think I addressed most of the questions. I see a couple that are, have already been addressed. So I just wanna thank everyone for their time today. Looks like most of you have stuck around for the whole call, and I didn't anticipate it to go this quite this long, but thank you very much. We're really excited about this new launch. If you have some, some ideas or feedback from, the, uh, from what you've seen today, let us know. We'd love to hear it. And if you have any other questions that I didn't address, please, please reach out to us. We will have a recording available. Um, and so if you don't get that by tomorrow, just ping us, and we'll let you know. And, uh, and that's all for today. So thank you very much for your time, and have a great Tuesday afternoon.